Let's talk about Israel's new friends. For years, many Arab countries banded together against Israel. But some countries are rethinking that. Saudi Arabia was actually uh, the first Arab state to put normalization with Israel on the table. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made a secret visit to Saudi Arabia. Some are even making it official. The agreement signed between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain formalizes relationships already in place. What they're calling normalization appears to have been happening quietly for years. Now it's out in the open, and the U.S. is pretty much leading the whole thing. So what does normalization even mean? What's in it for these countries? And how does it affect the Palestinians? Normalization is basically diplomatic speak for two countries having some kind of formal relationship where before there was none, through things like trade deals, setting up embassies, and direct flights. But not that long ago, the idea of Gulf countries having cordial relations with Israel was unthinkable. There's been a lot of bad blood. In 1948, Israel expelled around 750,000 Palestinians and declared itself a state. The conflict catches the inevitable innocent in its toil. That basically sparked decades of on-again, off-again Arab-Israeli wars. At one point, Saudi Arabia even sent in troops. Since then, the problem has been how Israel is slowly taking over Palestinian land by illegally building settlements, blockading the Gaza Strip, and militarily occupying everything else. So for as long as many can remember, Saudi Arabia has stood by the Palestinians, particularly King Salman. Together with other Arab states, the Saudis drew a line in the sand in 2002. No normalization without an end to Israeli occupation and agreement on the establishment of a Palestinian state on the 1967 lines. But King Salman is not really in charge anymore, and his son seems to have other ideas. The old guard is anti-Israel, is pro-Palestinian. But now you have a newer generation, the new guard. He is not very attached to the uh, Palestinian identity. It's why those recent reports of a secret Saudi-Israeli meeting got so much attention. In a first of its kind visit, U.S. and Israeli media say the American Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was on an official visit to Saudi Arabia when Benjamin Netanyahu flew over too. And touched down in Elm. The Saudis, though, say it never happened. There's something going on. Uh, Israeli are excited to go public in this. Uh, the Americans are excited before Trump leaves. And the Saudis seems more, let's take it step by step. We have a vision where uh, Israel becomes a normal part uh, of uh, the region, where it has uh, fully normal relations with its neighbors. What we need to have that happen is for a peace deal between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Other countries are already embracing a new friendship. Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates both signed deals with Israel in 2020. A golden opportunity for peace, security, and prosperity for our region. Those who are with us today and those who will join us tomorrow, I say, Assalamu Alaikum. Sudan has a normalization agreement too. So where does all of this leave the Palestinians? Well, it weakens their leader's position to negotiate a peace deal with Israel. And for many Palestinian people, it'll just be harder to get justice or undo decades of Israeli occupation. The Palestinians are saying Israel has been rewarded for conceding nothing. <laughs> so why the change? I think for the Emirati it's very clear. It's a business transaction. There was a UAE-Israeli trade conference, and Twitter pages are now promoting Israeli products in the Gulf and Emirati products in Israel. You hear me, friend, far away, far away. I hear you play. Any other year, this joint music video by Israeli and Emirati artists would have just seemed weird. But this is 2020. It puts Israel in a different light. It revives the ability to really openly work and openly trade with these countries. Trading with Israel would make business sense for Saudi Arabia too. But normalizing with Israel is about more than making money. It's no secret that MBS is trying to remake his own image as a modern leader. He's got a lot to overcome. Think the war in Yemen. Arrest 
blasting critics, even accusations he was involved in the shocking dismemberment of the journalist Jamal Khashoggi. He plans at some point to, to ascend to power. He plans not to have any uh, Western uh, disapproval of, of this, especially in Washington. So this is big on his mind. So for a smooth ascension to the throne, MBS needs friends in high places. We've become very good friends. Back in 2018, Trump and MBS were laughing it up at the Oval Office. The occasion was a business tour by Saudi Arabia. Three billion dollars, 525 million dollars. That's peanuts for you. <laughs> Under Trump, it's a relationship that seems to be able to withstand just about anything. Even after Khashoggi's murder, Trump's son-in-law and advisor Jared Kushner kept in touch with MBS. But with Joe Biden as U.S. president, that relationship is expected to change. It's not going to be any more uh, WhatsApp messages with uh, Kushner in the middle of the night. It's going to go back to institutional relations, to uh, going through the embassy, going through the State Department. But there's still time for Trump and others to influence the next four years, especially when it comes to Iran, because nothing makes friends quite like having a common enemy. They divert tens of billions of dollars to their nuclear program. We will never let that happen. One of the first things Trump did in office was pull out of the nuclear deal and order more sanctions on Iran. But the incoming U.S. president says he wants to revive that deal. That could be why Trump seems to be pushing all these new alliances in the Middle East before Biden gets in. I cannot reverse a, a, a Saudi-Israeli deal. Uh, if it already happened before he comes to power, it already happened. He has to deal with the new, new reality. A deal between MBS and Netanyahu won't be an easy sell to many people in the region. There's already been some resistance to the deals that were signed before. Normalizing ties with Israel's Arab neighbors is a big win for Netanyahu. Saudi Arabia would be the top prize. For all of them, it's good for business. For some, it means isolating Iran. But for the Palestinians, it's a betrayal. If there's a news story or a topic you want us to explain on Start Here, get in touch by leaving a comment wherever you're watching this video. The best way to keep up with our episodes is to like, follow, or subscribe to Al Jazeera. I'll see you next week.